That's what's going on. That's what's going on whether people recognize it or not. It's a way of canceling, I was going to call it cancel comedic culture, cancel Afrocentric culture, question mark. Maybe that's what we'll go with this and maybe follow up, hopefully, with I9 Brethren. Hail up, Ross Seymour. You know, this is in the early hours of the morning. This has been like about a couple of days, you know, since I got to know about this. But it seems as though this was going on for maybe over the past week or so. And now we're in the Hanukkah, right? Rastafari, Maccabees fighting, Isla Days, you know, the Maccabees, Maccabee Bible. Rastafari say that, you know, from even the very beginning. Very important, the theme of Maccabees here in this season, this time, you know? So he'll up to call Yisrael, call Yasharala, all Israel, you know, at home and abroad, the once lost, now found black and brown people of the Bait, Yisrael. But you know what I noticed is interesting? Like the Sarnetas, maybe they're going to have some, maybe they're still getting their, their facts together or whatever about, about that. The Jabaris and, and others that, that promote and push, you know, the comedic, you know, comedic culture and always be encouraging, you know, black people to go, you know, and tour, you know, go on tour to um, Martin Arbo, Arbo-centric, Arabo-centric or Arabo-centric. We're going to coin this term. It may be a term already, but we need to use these terms. Because you see what's this on the title right here. Calls grow to cancel Kevin Hart's comedy show in Egypt over, quote, Afrocentric, end quote, views. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, we, we've been seeing this going on. But it seems as though a lot of ones who are like pro-comedic, you know, and pro going to, to Egypt, or they'll call it Kemet. But when you get the ticket, the ticket don't say Kemet. It says Egypt. So what about Egypt? Well, it really wasn't even called Kemet over all its history. You know, what about Smai, Tawi, Tameri? You know, we call it Mitzrayim. We the Israelites. But we as Israelites, we, you know, black and brown people over here, especially in these Americas and Caribbean, especially on the social media streets, are always getting hit up by those who say that they're Egyptians and that our culture is ancient Egypt and we talk in Egypt, or they, they talk Kemetic this and Kemetic that. Well, this is an interesting situation right here that has arisen. But it seems as though, you know, the YouTube, social media streets, maybe somebody's saying something about it, but, but, but what's being done about it? Some of the Habarim, fellow disciples, no doubt remember, you know, that we said, you know, why not the, if the Kemetics or those black people who say that they are Kemet or identify with Kemet or, you know, emphasize Kemet, you know, in the teaching. That's interesting. We just posted a video about Dr. Ben. <laughs> see, see, we don't have to deal with our own, you know, Dr. Ben, you know. He's a Beta Israel black Jew from Ethiopia. Yes, he, he somewhat was apostatish. You know, yes, he was somewhat of a secular, you know what I mean? And, 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 and it'd be happening. You know what I mean? Not all who are of Israel are Israel. So it'd be happening. We don't dismiss his, his intellect, his scholarship, and his research. He did a very good book, you know, and we the black Jews witness to the white Jewish uh, Ray Smith. Now, although he talked a lot of black, 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 talking about Dr. Ben, he also worked with them people, you know, over there. You know what I'm saying? You know, but, but note this. Uh, well, Check out the video that we did. We went into some specifics. This is not about Dr. Ben, Yohanan, or as others would say, Jokinen, and the reason why there's that confusion, because he really didn't know, you know, he didn't know the Ethiopian or the Hebrew language. He, 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 he was one that wasn't really raised in the culture in a certain way, and many of us wasn't, you know, so therefore this became problematic in his latter years, but he was a, a great, you know, researcher and lecturer on Kemet, and he's one of the, you could say, the founding fathers of this emphasis amongst many black people. And just listen to how some, you know, some ones and ones are commenting on this on some of the different pages. We checked out a few of the pages and how different black people are. <laughs> Y'all scared? Y'all scared? <laughs> You're scared of the Arabocentricism? You know, <laughs> they're so scared that, 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 that some are almost even dropping, you know, so-called Afrocentricism. <laughs> but some Egyptians, was it, they say Egyptians, mm. modern Egyptians, let's call it modern Egyptians, might have taken to Twitter. Now, this is, this is somewhat old because I think now they've already canceled his, um, that, that tour, you know, that tour. Well, not, not really a tour, but like a comedy, a comedy tour. 
You know what I mean? They take they, they took to Twitter, right? They took to Twitter, accusing the U.S. comedian, right, of blackwash, accusing a black U.S. comedian, a black American comedian, of so-called blackwashing Egyptian history. What? This is a case of the pot who called in the kettle. What? Say what? Say what? So here, here, here we have him right here. And his wife, okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna go there. Not, not not here. US actor and comedian Kevin Hart and his wife and Nico Parrish. See it's a US actor, United States actor. You know, there's a difference between United States <laughs> and America. You know what I mean? So we say black American. You know what I'm saying? Some say African American, but that's yeah, we do identify with Africa. You know what I mean? But but what, what do we know about Africa? Now, even when Kevin Hart is said to have said what he had said, somebody must have found some old comedy of him, you know, and he said that, and that bothered them so much, right? And, and, and who is them? They live. Well, well, who are they, right? Who are these, um, you know, what do they represent right here? I think it was right over here. Was it on this right here? Let's see. I think this is... Um, claims we were kings okay yeah here here it goes right here we took this off of which page was this this was one of the pages when we was looking looking into it okay here we go right here okay reality check so his thing was called a reality check tour and can we say you know he's a comedian you know not as funny as he is but you know i guess he got kevin hart got a reality check so kevin hart and the comedics you know we are the comedics Right? The, 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 the pro-Egypt, you know, the ones that say, hey, let's do a tour. Let's go to Egypt, you know, or Kemet. Let's go to Kemet and look at our great ancestors and so forth. And, 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 and what are we doing? What are you doing? Not, not we. We're not doing that. But y'all who are doing that, you're going over there and putting money in the same pockets of people who hate you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that all hate you. You see what I'm saying? But, you see, their hate of black people and their hate of black American. Now, who are they? These are they who are Arabocentric, right? They're the ones who are the liars, really. You know what I'm saying? You know, Kevin Hart, reality check. He got a re reality check even before the new year, <laughs> right? This was, the, this was the banner right here. Tour 2023, Cairo, 21st of February, 2023, Cairo Indoor Stadium. Built with United States dollars, of course. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't know about that game that the politicians be doing. You know, they be withdrawing funds for their own citizens, like black Americans, you know? And they be parlaying it around the world, United States government, the politicians, you know, to get favors. You know, they be using dollars, right, that they should be spending here, right, on their citizens, you know, especially the black Americans and other United States citizens, you know, who have a historical connection to this place, right? As well as a historical beneficialness. Can we say that? That's a new word. We call new words right here all the time because the English language is deficient, right? A beneficialness, right? Who have been beneficial to this country. Yes, there's some things that one can argue about that. We're not saying in every way, but overall, you know what I mean? Overall, that's part of the hidden, you know, the hidden, not hidden colors, but the hidden history. Right? So, Kevin Hart Nation, they took him down, they took him down, they took him down. Here's what Monia Ehab says, Monia Ehab won, right? They, they built this hashtag, look at the hashtag they built. Kevin Hart underscore is underscore not underscore welcome underscore in underscore Egypt. Egypt. Gypsies have taken over. Mm-hmm. You aren't welcome to Egypt. Egyptians aren't Africans. Note also how they put Africans. See, they used to be doing that with black. You remember before with black? They still do that some places, but people have peeped that game right there. They would have like, like there was a black man, there was a white man, and there was this black man. And for the white man, it would be capital W, right? And for black, it would be lowercase b. They'd be doing that a lot, you know, in, in, um, in the media and in publications, you know, publications that should understand better, but they don't do that for other people. You know what I'm saying? Now, notice what this Monya, Monya Ehab, right? Monya Ehab. 
What does Monia Ehab say right here? <laughs> Egyptians, capital E Egyptians, aren't lowercase Africans. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. It gets it gets better or worse. Half empty, half full. Depends on your perspective. We're Monia Ehab and her fellow Arabo, Arabo centric um, Egyptians, right? What they say? We're the real builders of the civilization. What civilization? What civilization you built? Show me any, <laughs> anywhere else in the Arab world. These are latter day Arabic related, Ottoman, Turkish related. If we go a little bit further, we'll see where the Greeks came in during the Potomac time. There was some war among different groups from Alexander's time. You know what I'm saying? And then the Romans came in. You know, then there was the, the Arabians, the Bedouin, as the Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he says, there was the Bedouin. The Bedouin Arabs, it says, are the worst of the Kafiruna, right? And Kafiruna in, 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 in Arabia Fusa is like to say like concealers of the truth but look what they say right here they say that they're the real builders of the civilization hmm. no one else <laughs> you, you could tell even by this 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 post here this twit this twit this tweet whatever of Monia Ehab you can tell it sounds very strong and and I guess it is coming from them you know who are very much dependent on United States subsidies did you know did you know how dependent they are in other words they get United States dollars right you know technology other things so forth and so on to basically stay afloat it wasn't always that way but as we come into this modern times right here you know you can study the historical record especially like say from the 70s you know even moving more forward you know to right now they you know they get a lot of united states dollars they basically are a a a a state welfare case of the united states and much funds and monies are derived right from different communities including the black community in america you know so when they talk about like, like there was a brother who posted something so i brought on your name but a lot of people sharing around his posts and he said something to the effect about how biden let me see if i could bring this up right here don't have it over here on this record right here but they said something about biden right let me get this right here biden biden to do what let me let me bring this up right here Biden, yeah, it was it was a TikTok, I think a TikTok, but it was end up on Facebook, had like 975 shares. Um, it says, my nation, this is Biden, right? Biden is speaking, my nation's original sin. Uh-oh. My nation's original sin. And I have posted on one of our um, WhatsApp group for Discipleship Radio here. It was actually posting on uh, Farrell El Aton. Um, Farrell say that the black American Rastafari elder um, Egypt wants to cancel Kevin Hart for saying ancient Egyptians were black you know that came up on our you know notifications and everything so we sent it around to the group and definitely want to sit down and you know watch it full of full but the first thing we did was then look up say what this has been going on and lo and behold it was going on and a lot of the the anti black um jew and 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 black people israelite amongst our own people right we, we got with amongst our own people what the common denominator is a lot of them black people who are anti-israelite or anti we black people we the black jews of the line of the tribe of judah we as israelites being black you know they promote you know this kind of comedic rhetoric against us you know but they barely say anything about the people who really have not just only robbed but desecrated the culture these are grave robbers what they do they don't do this anywhere else in the world notice right the egyptians you know what's the official language of of ancient egypt egypt not ancient egypt what's the official language of modern egypt is it hieroglyphics is it metu netta is it raen kemet raen komet no it is arabic 
all right? We're going to do a little bit of like we can get into some of the history, you know, the type of real history we should know. And so we can really assess what this Monia Ehab, I think Monia Ehab, right, is one of the people who, who kicked this off. You can see it's roughly 11.05 a.m., December 13th, 2022. Somebody came across, you know, an interview from Kevin Hart where he mentioned it's totally unrelated to this, this right here. You know, it's totally unrelated to his tour coming up in 2023. But he spoke about, um, let's go to what, let's go to what Kevin Hart said right here. Kevin Hart. Let's go to the part where Kevin Hart said, he says, when we were kings, you know, and they mock that. You know, there's many ones who mock that, right? Um, he says, we must teach our children the true history, right? Um, black Africans, as black Africans, when we were kings in Egypt, and not just the era of slavery that is cemented by education or rather miseducation. Kevin Hart also needs a good rabbi. <laughs> Do you remember the time when we were kings? You know, basically, I guess, you know, um, opining or kind of alluding, we can say, to um, Michael Jackson's, you know, you remember, the, you remember the song, you know, you know, when we were kings and all that. Remember, the, do you remember the time? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this is basically what he said, right? Hart's critic, Kevin Hart's critic, critics from across, you know, our buys, our buys, you know, and the Arabs were, were the Turkish Ottoman Turks. They were invaders. There was a series of invasions, right, of what was ancient Egypt coming into this modern time. And the last of them, the ones to really settle down and get, you know, foreign white government subsidiary status, you know, was Egypt, you know? So Hart's critics, you know, have noted an interview the comedian gave where they say he claimed Africans were the kings of Egypt. What did he say? He didn't say that Africans were all the kings of Egypt. He, he, he didn't say that. What he said right here was we must teach our children true history, right, of black Americans when they, you know, were kings in Egypt. Like, there was kings. They, they even have the article out there. They even, even the racist, that racist uh, Egyptologist guy, Hawass, that crazy guy, Hawass, you know, they finally caught him for a lot of misappropriations in his office, embezzlement, cons, all kind of bribery. That was the, the big Egyptologist on all these history channels and shows from like the 90s and everything that was trying to dismiss the African, the black connection at every point he could. And did you know that they receive money from our government? I say our government, right? We got to be politically correct here, right? As black Americans. Mine as so-called, according to what is written in their documents, African Americans. That's African or Black Americans. Egypt, right? These same Arabocentric, you know, we can call them haters. They are haters. They was they're hating on. They're not, see, they're using Kevin Hart to get to you, comedics. They're coming after you, comedics. In fact, I think it was last year. This will be a big conference or whatever, and it said that the the government of Egypt use some of the same software they was talking about allegedly Trump may have used, you know, in the election or some Hillary Clinton, you know, they talk this software, this Russian, Russian hacking of the election. You remember that big story, Russian hacking? Well, the same software, right, these racist anti-black, this is what is, they are racist. This is clearly racism. This is, this is clear racism at day. Now, of course, we can look and say, well, look how they stick together, so forth and so on. You are right. How they stick together. And the only group, right, when I say group, I'm talking about a big group, and my father's house has many mansions that's able to do this, right, is we, the black Jews, right, the Hebrew Israelites, we Ethiopian Hebrews, those who identify, right, with Yisrael. I'm talking about Israel of the scripture, Israel of the prophecy, right? We the black Jews. That's why if you notice how that whole firestorm had come up, it's still it's still lingering. The embers are still burning. Still burning. Now this comes up. <laughs> right? Now this comes up. Oh, this is what Biden said. Biden says my nation's original sin. Biden apologizes to delegation of African leaders for the quote unimaginable cruelty of slavery. Right? 
but, but 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 let's put this thing in perspective right here right let's put this thing we're gonna go back to monia 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 ammonia monia you know moaning the moaning monia ehab right unimaginable cruelty hmm See, because they know and still this passed on amongst them. You know, some things people talk about amongst themselves, right? And rarely do groups outside of themselves know about these things. This is what we need again, brothers and sisters. We who are Hebrews and Israelites, this is what we need. We, the black Jews, this is what we need again. This is what's going to happen. This is what already is happening. You know, as we hold to Ha Torah, as we hold to the Berit, the covenant, right? Even the Berit Chadasha, so it be. You know what I'm saying? But... Biden said, for Biden, for Biden, for Biden, he apologized to delegation of African leaders <laughs> over there in Africa. <laughs> now, I would dare say that some of them, and this has been proven, some of them are descendants of some of them who actually cut deals, right, with the so-called um, Europeans and enslavers, slave drivers and slavers of the Beta Israel and black people, right? But you know, before the white man rising up in this slave trade, slavery business, you know who was first, right? It was the Arabs, right? That's why it made me think, I said, well, how many, um, what was the question? Oh, slavery in Egypt, right? And I looked it up. There's a whole page out there. I would suggest to ones to, um, you know, save that page because they might try to go over that page and change some information. You know, because it's a thing that most pro-black Egypt and comedic pseudo scholars don't even touch on. A few of the real scholars do, but it seems as though it's not a real issue. You know, let's just go over to Egypt so we can see our ancient, great comedic, black comedic history. And, and, and what are we doing over there? We're allowing right, the descendants of the people who grave robbed your ancestors, right, grave robbed your ancestors, exploited, grave robbed. Where else in the so-called Arab world do you see this? Where else in the Arab world do they dig up? Where else do people dig up the graves of their own people and expose them like that? Where else do they do that? You see, so let's look at what Monia said for a moment. All right? It's like ammonia. <laughs> We're the real builders of the civilization. What civilization? Oh, you mean the Egyptian civilization? Really? How come you never... Where's the pyramids in other Arab countries? Where's the pyramids in other Arab or Ottoman Turkish Arab country? Where are the pyramids? Where, where do we see this culture anywhere else? Mm. You see what happened, people? If you go back in time, the Egyptians, the modern Egyptians, the modern Egyptians, once you come into like the, the AD time, they wasn't all interested like they are now. They become interested because of us. Just like they hear hip hop, they become interested in, and then they do their own Arabic version of hip hop. When many of these people have come over here, remember back in 9 11 when there was the whole thing about the Arab, the Muslim, everything? They were basically stealing and taking civil rights things, right? And speaking as though. They identify with us, but they was using what our ancestors did to benefit themselves. And then they turn around and do something like this. Where's the protest from others in that region of the world? Mm, I guess you won't find it. And notice what they go on to say. Monia Ehab, right? Says, says the Afrocentric, lowercase a, the Afrocentric is just a lie. No, the Arabocentric is just a lie. All right? The Arabocentric is just a lie. But, but see, our people don't even use that term. See, they make up these terms, you know, like that's like a spell craft. And they throw it against us. And we get so caught up, right, that sometimes we even might. I'm not saying Afrocentric is a bad term. Don't get me wrong. Because even, you know, even Hebrew, right, even Gutas, Ethiopic, Amharic, right, even Arabic is a Afro-Shemitic language, right? See, if we, if we dig deep enough in the research, we'll find that, you know, that even they, they stole that, borrowed that. That's not their origin either, right? They are liars, right? Not the Afrocentric, because, because Arabic is Afro-Semitic. It's Afro-Semitic. Afro-Semitic. Go look it up, right? <laughs> look up Arabic. Look up Afro-Semitic languages. We say Afro-Semitic, but 
you know, the, the Europeans say Afro-Semitic, you know, in academia. And you'll find that Arabic, right, so-called Arabic, you know, you want to you see what we call the real Arabs, the ones that have the bloodline, the DNA, the ancient. See, look at the Sudanese people. Look at the Sudanese people. And, and notice in Sudan, we got pyramids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Where, where, where else? You, you, you have pyramids in Arabia? Where, where's the pyramids in Arabia? Uh, uh, well, if they are really from Arabia. You know, because the Ottoman Turks were not Arabic people, but they spoke Arabic. You know, because of religious reasons. Right? And they conquered that whole region of the world. Right, right into Africa and many places they was able fully to conquer, you know, and take over Egypt. Right? They had conquered also the land that's known as as the Canaan, Palestine, or where the state of Israel is as well. You know, but then the British had beat them. Very good movie, Lawrence of Arabia. Check out Lawrence of Arabia. When you watch that movie Lawrence of Arabia, you'll notice there's a whole bunch of black. Right, Arabs in that movie because there really is black Arabs. Right, some of our black people are Shemitic people, some are Hamitic people. You see, the, the white Anglo Saxon Protestant has lied, and these people are in bed with the liars. Right, this is like a conspiracy against us. So, even if you're a comedic, pro comedic, you know, you say you, you link with Kemet and, and you recognize the Africanness, yes, there is Africa, of course, it is. Even Wallace Budge. Right, E. A. Wallace Budge in his books, he talks about that a lot. Right, the, the African link. This is why ones like Zawi, Zawi Hawasi, Hawas, you know, Nahash, you know what I mean? Even he said, Oh, yeah, the Dr. Ben, uh, not Dr. Ben, he said, Dr. Uh, Wallace Budge, Wallace Budge, Wallace Budge. You know, he was very inaccurate. He was inaccurate with what he said. And then he said in the same documentary I watched, he was like, but I read him, I, I study him, because they try to reverse engineer, right? See, Egypt has become popular with the modern day Egyptians because it's become popular with us. Again, Egypt, right, ancient Egypt has become popular with the so-called modern Arabic, Arabo Egyptians because it's become popular with black people. They all know they be biting black people stuff, flipping it up, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's known you know now they figure that they're, they're jiggy because you know there's media they can pick up on it so forth and so on but there's something very racist there's something very racist at the heart of it how, how do we say this do you know the history of modern egypt all right so we can see who's really the liars notice look at look at a map today right on what continent is modern day Egypt? It's on the African continent. This is a serious psycho psychopathy going on right here, right? So we got to recognize, you know, that we're not dealing with ones who are very stable to begin with. You know what I'm saying? But here's the things, what can we do about it, right? Is another group of comedics, pro-comedic folks, you know, like we're asking around the community, what are the some of the leading ones and ones saying about this in the community? You know, notice the failure of the comedic community is they don't even begin off with Kemet is our land. If Kemet is your land, then start to drop the facts about how your land was taken from you. You know, because then if you get into the history of it, you can build and make a case. You know, to return your land. It's just like like many native people have done, right? Or people who have made the argument and made the connection. But you never hear about one. Just say, well, Kemet belongs to us. Kemet is ancient. And then they'll try to put pit Kemet versus, you know, the, those black people who identify with ancient Egypt as Kemet against we black people who identify with Israel. Even though the facts of the matter is that both of them were black peoples, right? And both of them were African peoples from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. right? Because remember, Africa is a modern day terminology. It's a latter day terminology. The concept is called Ethiopia. But we don't have to go way back there. Just in modern times, right? If you look up where Egypt is, it's on the continent of Africa. But why do they say... The modern Arab-centric Egyptians. Why do they say they are they aren't lowercase Africans? And why do they say that 
Afrocentric is a lie, seeing that the Arabic language is a Afro-Semitic language. Like Hebrew is an Afro-Semitic language. That's how we make the argument right there, the language. We don't know anything about anything except through what the language, through the, through, through the narrative, the scriptures, the stories, the mythos, or whatever that has been communicated, it's all been, and also ancient Egyptian, right, was also, the ancient Egyptian is an Afro-Semitic language as well. So you see the Afrocentric needs to really upgrade on that sort of knowledge right there. You know, so they can't speak the truth to these liars. They say that Egypt is our land, not the Africans. <laughs> so, so lowercase Africans. Yes, thank you. Lowercase Africans. Mm. You see the bias? You see the racism? Do you see the pathology right here, here, here? You can also see, we can see that these people, right, have stuck together. That's why they was able to conquer and take over Egypt. And nowadays they're calling it their own. Not that, well, they, it's, like, it's, like, it's like white Americans coming to America during the time of the pilgrims and everything, so-called pilgrims, right? And claiming that everything gone, well, actually, white people have done that, actually. They, they kind of claim that even though they came over here and they conquered another people and took and stole their land, they actually claim that what they stole was actually their own to begin with. You know, look at the, psych, <laughs> the psychology there, the psychology psychopathy there all right so they said that that egypt is our land well one could say it's your land because you took it excuse me and the laws that be currently allow you to hold it and america and the western the white gentile world backs you up in that you know as long as the western white gentile world so why are they 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 are they in bed with white supremacy Right. Is modern Egypt in bed with so-called white supremacy, the inferiority, let's say it like we say it, the inferiority that's posing as supremacy? Because we can apply that same principle here. It's an inferiority that's posing as supremacy. Uh, Egyptians aren't Africans. All right. You mean today? You mean you mean y'all today? But, but what is your real history? What's the real history of these ones and ones? All right. And also the Afrocentric. Well, Afrocentric versus Arabocentric. I wonder if you like to follow up on these themes. Arabo, Arabo, like Arab, put an O after, and then centric. Arabocentric, right? And who are these Arabs? The Latter-day Arabs, you know, the Latter-day Arabs. Let's go over here, right here. So he got his reality check, they say, right? He got a reality check. This is what they're saying. They're saying he got a reality check. So calls had grew. And then I think in the latest that we saw, basically it was canceled. So it was canceled. This is what I picked up on. Maybe something will change or not. But, you know, the way that these people move, right? You know, the modern Arabs, you, you got to know who they really are. You can't believe how they lied to themselves, right? Because they're lying to themselves. Right? But we got to know, well, who are they really? Right? Who are they really? You know, like they say, you got to know your enemy because they're proven right here that they are black Americans' enemy and black people's enemy and Africans' enemy. Right? This is what's proven. Although it's a sign of force, you know, it's a sign of solidarity. They got together. A lot of them made this, you know, you know, they blew up the Twitter and everything and social media, you know, and a flurry and protests and, and you know, they're very emotional people. You know what I mean? So, you know, and also very potentially violent people as well. See, this is this is why <laughs> this is why we identify with who we really are as Israel, as Yasharala. You know what I mean? As of the line of the tribe of Judah, we the black Jews. You see what I'm saying? And this is why, hopefully, some in the comedic community, like the Sarnettas and the Jabaris and, and all, you know, the Dr. Reggie, you know, they love to make a big thing, you know, about we as black people who identify with the Torah, with the scripture, with the Bible, with our Israelite heritage and culture and our identity, as though we should not do that, right? However, right, notice when they came after one of us and i would say that the kanye's and even you know the the kyries right in spirit and in truth maybe he doesn't belong to any of the you know different groups or camps but in spirit he's one of us there's a lot of people in spirit who are you know one of us 
you know, when they came against, when that became public, notice the response, right, from black Jews, Hebrew Israelites, Ethiopian Hebrews, others who identify with this covenant, with this identity, with this name. You notice? Right? We say, blessed be HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. The Hashem is his name, but also the Shem is our name as well, as Yisrael. You saw the response? But I'm still waiting. Where's the response from the comedic community? They're probably wondering whether they're tours, right? Here's where tourism become horrorism. I don't mean horrorism like hor uh, like Horus, right? I'm not talking about Horus, horrorism. No, it becomes like whore, like a you know, like, like a whore. Like we are whore and we're taking our dollars and they already receive our United States dollars. You know, there's expenditures that really we don't really even talk about. You know, there's expenditures. And if we will become more conscious of that. We can therefore levy those tools that we have to show our power as well, right? Even and especially as black Americans or, if you please, as African Americans. They say he is blackwashing, right? Because basically Egypt is identified because of the Gentiles, the Anglo-Europeans like England and America and the Western white, white, white Gentile world. It's identified as a white country. That's because... You know, white supremacy, you know, the inferiority posed as supremacy had already laid claims. But even when they laid claims, many of their own people were identifying ancient Egypt with black people in what's called Africa and the cultures of Africa. You know, when we start to study the cultures, it's nothing like, you know, you know, the Arabic, the later day Arab culture of so-called Egypt. So this is also was said right here. Let's get this right here. Okay, so um, we thought this was an interesting comment right here, right? From Sally from the Valley. They took me out the home. <laughs> That's their little tagline. Anyway, Sunday at 9.16 a.m. I think this is heel up to um, Lipstick Alley, right? Some very interesting comments on Lipstick Alley. You know, Egypt is in Africa. Boom. <laughs> Egypt is in Africa. The content is called Africa. Right, and that territory that's on the continent of Africa is called Egypt. So he asked, right, or they asked, right, how are they not African? They are really trying to dismiss reality. This was one of the best. That's why I just took a, a, a screenshot of it. They're trying to do what? They are trying to dismiss reality. This is this kind of lie that going on. People will talk about us as Hebrews and Israelites dismissing reality, but it seems more and more as time goes on. More and more is revealing the things that, you know, ones from us have said based on the scripture and based on the spiritual download, you know what I mean, have, have, have published and have said. And we're seeing the picture, you know what I mean? We're seeing the picture come about right now. But what's the comedic community going to do? They, uh, you still got some tours? How many different comedic ones out there pushing Kemet have some tours to Egypt? You know, I, I mean, wow. They don't mind taking your money, you know, giving you, you know, uh, a little tour of what they want to show you. Because sometimes they don't want to show you other things, you know, while they grave rob. This is grave robbing. And it's not nothing new. Something has been going on for a while, right? Grave robbing. There was another comment right here. Let's see right here. Um, I'm probably going to get dragged, right? Okay, okay. They're talking about this one's talking about the taps. The whole taps. We just calling you the comedics. Others were talking about the whole taps. You know, how how are you denying being African but want to be Egyptian? You know what I'm saying? In these are ways. In these are ways. They are located in Africa. This person says right here, this is a Polaroid picture. <laughs> it was spelled a little differently. Team owner right here. They are located in Africa. They are stupid. Right? That's like Maine saying they're not part of America. They are just, they just are easily manipulated by white marketing. I, I, I get what you're saying, Polaroid picture, right? That's the way we see it today. But if we know the history, you know what I'm saying? You know, you got to know the history. How do we get here? You know what I mean? How do we get here? These people have no real land. Now, now this is, this is much true, right? They just take over other lands like gypsies gypsy egypt egypt gypsies you get it 
Now, the part about them being easily manipulated by white marketing. Hmm. Marketing when? You're talking about today? Because we look at the real history of Egypt, right? We'll get a better, we'll get a better, a better insight. Okay, that was on another research right there. We'll get a better insight. Let's go over here and let's do this for a quick moment right here as we take that main one right here. So reality check. Right? I guess Kevin Hart. Well, not just Kevin Hart, really the comedics are getting a reality check, but none of them are really responding to it, talking about what should be done. What should the comedic community do about this? How does the comedic community respond? Is there any comedic community, really? The whole taps, those who talk about Egypt, 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 you know, and always like to talk about, oh, uh, the Hebrews stole this from the Bible and stole that. Uh, Y'all just regurgitating. See, on one hand, they're regurgitating what, you know, the latter-day pale red abs and the, and the Arabo-centric Egyptians are saying and what the white, you know, so, you know the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, the Gentiles behind them. Because we look at the record. Let's look at the record right here. You know, we'll keep this within an hour long right here. And hopefully with my brother coming forward and maybe some others, we can just vibes on this. You know, because it's a, it's a subject matter that has a few interesting different, you know, sides to it right so let's go right here thought i had it over here let me see if i see if i have it in the pages right here okay let's let's do this right here and let's put in um what was it egypt right egypt i think we said slavery i think that's the first word slavery slavery right slavery um, and Egypt. Let's go simple right here. We're looking for a wiki page. A wiki page. Slavery. Okay. Now it says slavery in ancient Egypt. Okay. We're not really looking for that right there. There we go. You see slavery in Egypt. Notice something. Slavery in ancient Egypt. This is when they were, um, you remember the time when, when Egypt was Africans? Maybe some artists, some artists, take those kind of relics, do something with that. You remember the time when Egyptians were Africans? That would be good. Make it pop and make it jump. And they probably would ban it. Just like the movie, there was a movie with about Sadat, right? Sadat was clearly a Nubian, you know? You know what I mean? Yes, he was, he was Egyptian in that social sense, that, that artificial social construct, but it's clear right that he had we could say black african you know link now whatever he thought about it you know we know who's who and how do we know it's who's who could we do our research so there's the slavery in ancient egypt right We're not speaking about that right there right but it's something to follow up on you know what they call slavery but here let's look at slavery now properly when we're speaking about slavery you know, slavery didn't begin in modern times because slavery is a peculiar institution of modern times. There actually wasn't slavery in ancient times like there was slavery in modern times. The word and the whole coinage of the word was basically built for what it's been used for. Right? Many of us look at, okay, Slav, slavery come from Slav, the Slavics, you know, they were said to be a group of people who some considered to be white and, and European people, Slavic people who were enslaved, right, by so-called Arabic, dark-skinned, Moorish sort of people. Some claim that they were Moorish, black, African or not, but they were enslaved. Basically, the Slav story is a story of white people being enslaved by black people. You know, like to the black Amores, you know, but people are trying to rewrite history, you know, but there's too much evidence, you know, too much evidence right there. My slave life right here. Now, this is an interesting page right here, too. Could you see that little statue there in the corner? That's actually a a a Hebrew, right? Or some would like say a Shemitic, a Semitic. But now when you look at the statue, you know what I mean? And also some of the other pieces, you can see that this is basically like our people, like we the black Jews, you know, it identifies us. This is another clear identification. You know, it's interesting how they can dismiss the obvious. This is what the modern Arabo Egyptians, Arabo-centric Egyptians are doing. Now, let's go to this page right here, slavery in Egypt. So we're looking at slavery in Egypt existed up until the 20th century. But did you know that the first purveyors of what in modern times is called slavery or slavery 
were the so-called Arabo centric peoples. All right, Arabo, some of them may have been Mohammedans, you know what I mean? Mohammedans, some people put the religious aspect to it too, you know, with the rise of Islam, Mohammedanism, but also amongst that was also the Arabo centric rise of this particular identity, right, that they call being called Arabic in a latter day sense. So slavery existed up until the 20th century, but they try to give you the impression that what occurred in the biblical and the ancient times was the same thing as what occurs in the modern time. If you study the two, you'll find that it was different and also recognize that the word slavery is a very unique word, right, that has to do with the period of time, when was it coined? The etymology. And let's do this right here, really quickly right here. Etymology, etymology, right? Etymology of slave, right? Of slave. We can go, yes, yeah, slave, because slave is connected with institution, right? Here they say right here, they say Slavonic peoples have been reduced to servile state. Right, to servile state. They used to use servile, bond servant, you know, bond maid, you know, um, bond man, bond maid, you know, bond maiden, maid servant, man servant. That's a servile who you had to serve, right? So even then, it was no slavery. But because these people were Slavonic, this terminology, Slav, so because of how cruelly they were treated, they identify the cruel treatment of others just like this other group of people known as the Slavonic people. So here's where the term slavery comes in, right? By conquest in the ninth century, the ninth century. So the ninth century is roughly any time in the 800 years. From 800 to 899 would be the ninth century. So this term Slav or slave as it's said in another way, or slavery or slavery, basically we could say emanates or, or begins right starts out right as a, a term in the western gentile in the latter day world system nation state system roughly around 800 before that people refer to ones as a servant right and it all depends on the type of servitude now we're not saying that some captivity and servitudes wasn't really bad we're not trying to say that right there we're saying that they play this word game, word magic, spellcraft, right? To make you think that everybody has slaves. But we showed you before that slavery was a peculiar institution. We also showed that slavery was something that was invented, right? And it was invented by these here um, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants. So first one to enslave other people in a really humiliating, breaking way in modern times, right, was the so-called Arabo, the Islamic, the Mohammedan people, and basically the Moorish, and well, Moors get caught up in that as well. You know, just look up the history on this, right? But the term slave as it's used right here, let's go to this right here, just to point this out to ones and ones. You can see that where it says 1300, so the word became more popular. So the actual people, the Slavonic peoples around the 800s, that they were reduced to a servile right, and, you know, a servile state. They were some of the first in modern times that's recorded, right, who were treated as chattel, was treated as cattle and chattel and, and the property of another. Now, people say, well, wasn't there slavery in the past? Ancient peoples had different mores than this latter day times. Let's point that out, right? This is why they also use different terminologies. Slave doesn't even appear in the Bible properly. The two places that it does appear have been proven to be interpolations. Not so much mistranslation, but interpolation. They added something in there, right? So you can see right here, Slav, slave, uh, sclavus, right? From a Slav, a Slav, right? A Sclavo in Spanish, originally Slav. There you go right there. You see this word right here? Originally, right? Originally Slav. So slave, right? Slave and slavery, right? originally had to do with the Slavic people, right? And if you click on Slav for a moment, as we're gonna do right here, Slav, one of the people who inhabited most of Eastern Europe. So we know we're not talking about 
you know, your traditional black people and actually we're talking about Indo-European people. Sloveno, Sloveno. You see the word Sloveno is a slave. Slovo, Slovo, word, speech, and they're going into that. But we know there's a group of people, right, that was reduced to servitude, a harsh servitude, right, under certain um, Arabic, you know, Arabic slave trade, you know, that's what it's often referred to as, you know. So it says it was used in this secondary, you see what it says, secondary sense. You see the word secondary? It was used in this secondary sense, right, because of the many Slavs sold into, right, this bondage that they began to identify the Slavic bondage and captivity with slavery. And this is where the term was picked up on, right, and coined from, right, by conquering peoples. So basically the white European learned a lot from the, the Arab. And we always talk about, oh, the white man and the slave trade and the white man and the slave trade and look what he did to Africa. Yes, he did that. But where did he get that from? People seem to miss the historical connection, right? The historical connection. And Egypt is a good place to start, right? Egypt is a good place to start. Because when we go through this right here, it differ differed from the previous slavery in ancient Egypt. Well, there really wasn't slavery in that sense. We just pointed this out about the word. They play a word game. Being managed in accordance with Islamic law. So, so the slavery in Egypt by the Arabs. Remember, the Arabs were not indigenous to Egypt. This is all historically proven, simply, clearly. So how can these people nowadays, modern Egyptians, say that they are direct descendants of the ancients, of the ancient people, you know what I mean? And then try to say that they're not African, right? Where they come into this is with this, what we're reading, Islamic law from the conquest of the Caliphate, right, in the 7th century. You see the 7th century? Roughly the 600, the 600 going into the 700, because with Islam and, and their prophet of the Muslims, and you know, Muhammad and the, and the Islamic movement, that was roughly the 600. So we're getting a timeline from the 600, 640, 600, right? Going forward into the 700s, right? Spreading out around the world, pushing it by the sword, right? Into the 800s, the enslavement and conquest of the Slavic Eastern European people, boom. Notice the Khazars, the Eastern European Jews, when they had a choice, it is said, between Christianity, choosing Christianity, or choosing Islam, right? It is said roughly around 740 AD, right? And Judaism or the Israelite faith as they understood it, right? They chose the Israelite faith as they understood it or Judaism. I would say for them, that was a smart move, but some of them also chose Islam. See, that's not half of the story they don't tell you. They tell you that, that, that the Ashkenazi, Eastern European Jews, you know, even in that wonderful book by uh, Shlomo Sands, Invention of the Jewish Race, how that's been testified by many European Jewish authors and scholars, right? That there was a time when a group of Eastern European, Ashkenazi, Khazarian people chose adopted. But the other half of the story is that some of them chose, right? Some of them are said to have chosen Islam. Now, this makes a lot of sense when we think about the rise of the Ottoman Turks, right? And the Ottoman Turks, biblically speaking, are Hittites. And Hittites, biblically speaking, are Canaanites. Check, check, right? Until the practice stopped in the early 20th century, that means in the 1900s, having been gradually abolished in the late 19th century, right? So the 20th century is the 1900s and abolished in the 19th century. But you also have to recognize that because many of the Europeans, the European powers, England, other parts of Europe, and even America on the rise, they was taking interest in Egypt and the artifacts, you know, and grave robbing, right? So many of the Arab people who are the progenitors of the modern um, um, Egyptian people, right, were part of that. You know, there's a documentary about Wallace Budge, a History Channel documentary. These documentaries kind of tell you these things right there, right? It's sort of over, but you're not looking for it, right? When ones like Budge, 
right? And even before him, you remember there was Napoleon went there, right? Who did they have to by and large deal with, right? The people who had just conquered it, right? And who are the people who had just conquered it? The Arabic, the Turkish, Ottoman Turkish people who had came from elsewhere. They came from elsewhere. They were not indigenous to that land. This is just plain history, right? During the Islamic history of Egypt, right? And it's interesting in a sense. I would think that, that holding to Egypt by the latter-day Egyptians who majority would claim to be Muslim, right, would be something that would be, what would they call it in Arabic, in, in the Arabic of Fusa? Shark, 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 right, shark. You know, like, you know, holding to, to, to idols, Right? Wouldn't it, wouldn't it seem so? There's even one guy out there who, Asama, or Samu, or something like that, right? Um, Asama, <laughs> you know, who is out there and he is trying to like use the Quran to decipher the ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. It's, it's a very interesting time we live in, right? But during the Islamic history of Egypt, slavery were mainly focused on three categories male servants used for soldiers and bureaucrats, female slaves might right, use for sexual slavery as concubines, and female slaves and eunuchs used for domestic service in harems and private households. Now, see, if you really want to know the real connection of modern Egypt, you have to look at the Turkish, Ottoman Turkish history. Mm -hmm. The Ottoman Turkish history, right? At the end of the period, Right, and, and even when they came in, they were not very interested in the culture of the ancestors. Because if your ancestors really are the ancient Egyptians, why are you grave robbing them? Why are you disturbing their resting place? Do your peoples do this in any other Arab or Islamic country? You know, I mean, what would be done if somebody wanted to just disturb some, you know, Arabic or Islamic like graves and resting place? I don't think they'll take to that too kindly. So this is another proof of their hypocrisy. Right, the people. Right, it says at the end of the period, there were a growing agricultural slavery, but he needed people to work the land. It sounds similar, right, to what the white man, the European, you know, Anglo-American needed. That's why he picked up a lot of this from him. In fact, the European, if you study his history, he say he gives a lot of credit to the Arabic, the Moorish, the Islamic, you know, that influence, you know, with geometry or algebra and the Moors and El Cid and Spain and everything else. And also with a lot of the Muslim sons and Masons kind of thing that a lot of the Europeans were into. Right. So in a sense, it's like um, they are confederated together. See, we as Yisrael, as Yashirala, we know exactly who they are, like based on Psalm 83. We, you know, we understand who we're dealing with here. And we know how they are confederate together, together, right? So too bad what you've been studying from ancient Egypt didn't warn you about these people. You know what I'm saying? But the people enslaved in Egypt during Islamic times, they say here, mostly came from Europe and Caucasus. Caucasus, referred to as white. Mm. So tell me something. So when the Islamic people, the original people there, right? Well, what's the original people, the ones who took over Egypt and were running Egypt in this period of time, late 19th, early 20th century, right? When they started to enslave people, they said they came from Europe and the Caucasus. This is that white slavery that existed in the East, right? This is the white slavery of the East, right? And just like white slavery over here, they wasn't talking about white men doing something to white people. They was talking about non-white people doing something to white people. Notice, or from the Sudan and Africa south of the Sahara. Because we should know, even though it's not talked about so much, we give an overemphasis right, to the so-called white man, European, Anglo-American slave trade, and almost no emphasis to the so-called Arab, right, or some even authors and researchers mentioned as the Islamic, because that had a lot of part to do with it. You know, like, like civilizing the so-called heathen. You know, the black, these black savages. That was kind of their perspective, right? Even some of their documents, right? South of the Sahara, through the trans-Saharan slave trade, referred to as black. So basically the same with Egypt, there was a so-called white slavery, and there was a black slavery. This is what this part of this Wikipedia page is trying to say. 
Now, there's different periods of this, the Fatimid um, Caliphate, let's go down here, the Mamluk era, you know, from 935 to 1250, right? Now, the Ottoman, remember I was talking about the Ottoman, the Ottoman Turks, right? And, and, and Turkey, modern Turkey is, is the territory of the Hittites, right? And the Hittites, the children of the Bnei Chet, as you say in the Hebrew, Bnei Chet, right? Or Bnei Chet, right? They were Canaanites, right? They were Canaanites. And I'm emphasizing this for purpose, right? Because there's a lot of confusion. They try to put us as black people under the Canaanite curse because it says in, in the Bible, be a servant of servant, and they flip it to a slave of slaves. The Ottoman Egypt period, they come from the Ottoman Egypt period. Modern Egypt, as we see it today, is part of the Ottoman Egypt period. Now, there was war with Britain, and then they went to war, you know, at times with the Europeans, right? But then, right, when they recognized they had a common purpose, a common interest, and that's the subjugation of the melanated African peoples, right? <laughs> Whether in Egypt or in greater Africa. How about that, right? 1517 to 1805. Right? And so the, con the wives and concubines of the Mamluk right, have been referred to as white slaves. Right? Black slave women were used as domestic maids. And the majority of the wives and concubines of the Mamluk had, have been referred to as white slaves. So we get here in the Ottoman Egypt is a, a, a confluence of the Turkish forces Right, that were conquering and fighting, you know, Islamically in the name of Islam, though they were not Arabs. Remember the Ottoman Turks, they were not Arabs, but they spoke Arabic because of their religion, right, and also because of the many different Arab places and territories that they conquered. You see what I'm saying? You know, and the Ottoman Turkish people, you know, there's a strong link and a relation even with the Ashkenazi and the Khazarian peoples. Right, as well in ancient times, right, in antiquity. Bring that forward as well. The research there. The white slave woman bought to become concubines and wives of the ones that are known as the Mamluks were often from the Caucasus, the Caucasian, or Georgian, who were sold as to slave tra traders by their poor parents. You see, there's a whole different thing over here that's going on. You see what I'm saying? When we recognize the reasons for their so-called slavery and then vis-a-vis -vis, this was not the same thing that was going on right in so-called um as we have to say it right here black africa but because the north was already lost northern africa was already lost from the time of the potomis talking about the the late bc times right that your comedic scholars don't like to really go into this they like to fly over this because they don't want to say anything like kevin hart did <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But they're not really big like Kevin Hart. If they were big like Kevin Hart, right, they would have to watch themselves like, like Kevin Hart, right? It was common practice for the men of the Egyptian Mamluk upper class to marry a woman who had previously been the slave concubine of either themselves or another Mamluk. So they would take the same, like, woman. Don't ask. And the practice of marrying the concubine or the widow of another Mamluk were a way of normal Mamluk alliance policy. This is this is part of their politics. Mm -hmm. See, even though we're not, we don't do this ourselves. We need to understand, right, the psychology, the history, right, of our enemies or adversaries. The marriage between Murad Bey and Nafisa Al Baida widow of Ali Bey al-Kabir was an example of this marriage policy similar to that of Shawakar Qadim, the concubine of Uthman Kata Khuda, right, and died 1736, who were given in marriage by Abd al-Rahman Jawish, right, to Ibrahim, right, Kata Khuda died 1754 after the death of Uthman Katkuda, right? Now, we have here, right, the um, Muhammad Ali dynasty. So, notice right here the time periods. We have the Fatimide, right, the Fatimide right there. Do they give a time? They say something about the Middle Ages, right? But since it's Fatimide, it was sometime around the 600s, right, the 600s. Then we go to the Mamluk, 
right? Notice who says military slavery. Military slavery. Even says originally the Mamluks were slaves of Turkish, Turkic origin from the Eurasian state. These are the people who are running things, right? Who are willing to put the force, the blood, the brutality to take over things, right? But the institution of military slavery spread, right, to include the Caucasians, you know, like the Caucasus, the Caucasians, what they call it. But even the Caucasians, they are some woolly haired people. See, this is why sometimes we get confused because we look at the, the, the Caucasians from history and we see them as woolly haired people. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Let's give the people here, we'll go over on this one just a little bit right here. Okay, let's do this right here. Let's, let's put the um, um, Caucasian, the Caucasian. Caucasian, yeah, Caucasian, already have that there. The Caucasian. Let's look at some of the images, if we will. Why the Caucasian? Right. Notice this right here. Wow, what a woolly here you have. Got to tell grandma. Look at look at that woolly here. So here we have woolly here. Right. We have woolly here. Um. People that will be referred to today as white people. Even in the article, it talks about the white slavery. Right. Right. These are these are some of them right here. Right. Sideshow. Right. You can see these woolly haired ones. Look at these woolly haired ones. Right. Look at these woolly haired ones. All right. Remember, these are biblically, scripturally, Canaanites. Remember, the Hittites, the land of the Hittites, was what we know as Turkey today. All right, Turkey today. All right, many of those people were pushed in different directions. You know, historically, when we go to like the the ancient past, you know, and even the Egyptians had fought against the Hittites. All right, they had fought against the Hittites as well. I think even the Battle of Kadesh famous battle that many Egyptologists they talk about but they don't really show you well who are these people they fought against so notice something many of these people like look at this right here look at this right here. look how many woolly ones here they have woolly hair you know so sometimes one will say even about some of the European Jews the Khazarian Jews that they have certain you know they have curly or woolly hair right but when we now look at the people let's go back over here we look at the people who were in their group you know, the related peoples to the region that historically places them coming from, right? So these are some of the same people. That's why you hear folks talk about even the modern, you know, the modern Jews and even the modern Arabs, that it almost appears like they are brothers. You know, they, they're the same people. Because in a sense, they are the same people, but they're not the people that they claim to be according to a study of their history Right? When we study the history, we see where these people come into something. You know what I mean? Even we can see where the Caucasians and the Slavic Caucasian people came into Islam. Right? Because it's a big thing over there. Russia is really battling that. And remember the whole Afghan? See, because the white man in America understood this when they had that whole thing about Afghanistan. Remember Afghanistan and there was the... Um, the Russians were in Afghanistan, and there was the Mujahideen, and all that was going on in Afghanistan. And remember how, I think it was Zabrignu Zabrinsky, how they were supporting, he was the one that was telling America they need to support, right, you know, these, these Afghans against the, you know, against the, um, the Russian troops. But then a lot of the Russian troops, when they would get captured, they was converting to Islam. And that was becoming a very problematic thing to Russia, which was supposed to be like a religious, like not religious, really, you know. So they were converting to it because many of them, it's a part of the same people group, right? You know, so we could say somebody could say, well, these people are basically like black people. They're like light skinned black people. You could say that if you want to. But here's what we're saying from a biblical perspective. This is some of the history of the Canaanite people and notice how they even refer to as the history of the Caucasian beauties notice something black woman look at this right here black uh, Yehudi Judahite Israelite Beta Israel right we say Negro black American you know and the Caribbean too look at these women here with their woolly hairs and you can see that there is a um is this over here right here where it says right here look what it says history of the Caucasian Caucasian Right, history of the Caucasian beauties. Right, they were considered right beautiful people with their woolly hair. 
I mean, they just got like, you know, their light skin or fair skin or white skin, if you want to call it like that, right? But they say there's something incredibly beautiful about these women. But notice their wool, their afros. This reminds me of like the Ethiopians, right? Some of the Ethiopians back in the days, how some of them used to have the fro, right? Or they would braid the fro. Like a lot of our people over here, we would braid our fro, you know what I mean? Back in the days, some still do it nowadays. You know, we have locks on you could braid the locks too, but they'll braid the fro and then you can unbraid the fro, you know what I mean? And you can have that wooly, 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 that afro. So they are regarded as beauties with that afro. Even by other, you know, the white woman were even looking, the white woman who didn't have afro type here, wooly here, you know what I mean, to like a blowout. <laughs> Is that a blowout? Some of you have to tell me I'm not really into that, you know what I mean, as far as know what this or that is called, right? And this is another picture right here, just to show you this right here. So you can get a better idea of what we're say saying, and it can be very clear to you, right? This is why just because someone is so-called dark skin, you know what I'm saying? You know, you may be back. That's why our elders, remember the elders and ancestors, you say, you may be my skin folk, but you're not my kin folk. Because they understood this. One could be, you know, my skin folk. You know, like to the white man, he look at all of us to be, you know, just niggas and black. But if we still have an idea of our identity, we know we're related peoples. Like you put us back on the continent, put us back in that region, and we'll be related peoples. But we are not necessarily the same people. But in the European, in the white man's eyes, what he did, he did what politically is known as balkanization. What is balkanization? What they did in the Balkans. Don't have time to get into the detail of that right there. But what they did in the Balkans. Here's a map so you can see what's going on here. Right? You see what's going on here? You can see where the Black Sea is, right? And if you know Georgia, the Caucasus Mountains, you know, and how many of them went into different parts of what's called Anatolia. Anatolia, right, is basically another name for Turkey, right? Where you see in the map right there, Anatolia, uh, Anatolia, right? You see where it says Syria there, right? It says Armenia right there. Then you have Persia. Remember the Black Jews? We were in Persia, right? And we was in Persia, sometimes under some of these same people, right? This explains some of the, you know, the old hatred that, that pops up in modern times. Now, when you look at some of the modern people, notice what you don't see. You don't see them able to have that afro naturally, but what they would do is like this cat right here, right? This cat right here, right? He basically has a, like a, a type of a wig, a wig or a hat, a hat wig on or something like that, right? And he's protesting something or another, right? Be that as it may, you don't find, you find that it's almost like as time goes on, right? They even get watered down more, right? You see what I'm saying? So because the woolly here that they had or that curly woolly here, it was attractive to even other Europeans. All the Europeans, you know, that's what they regard them as beauties, would see them with this woolly hair and their so-called, you know, fear, you know, light, you know, white complexion, and they found it to be beautiful. But the people themselves, as they became even more and more world savvy, they did not think of it, right, in the same way. And then we see right here where the dispersion of them, you see where it says the carcass, right, into places like Istanbul, right, into even parts of parts of Greece, you see what I'm saying? So the modern, you know, Egyptian people is a combination of all these different seed lines that all are historically testified to have come in as invaders, right, as invaders. Now remember, it's the Caucasian people, you know, who were victims of a genocide, right? You know, they were victim of some genocide amongst European, right, other groups of Indo-European you know, Hindu, Indo and Hindu European peoples, all right? So not to get all into that as well, but we could almost admit maybe it's because they had such seemingly black genes. You see, and that was from 1663 to 1864, all right? All right? The Caucasian of Turkey, all right? How they came into Turkey. And we see that there's a propensity, it seems, all right, for them to marry if you notice how they was marrying all the white, you know, the white woman from the Caucasus Mountains, you know, mixing up the seed and everything. This is where it comes down to who they are today, right? So it's a lot of mix and match and mix and match, 
you know, going on there, right? That's why one commentator said something about gypsies, right? Because in a sense, we're speaking about the original gypsies, right? Notice how gypsies sound like Egyptian. Right? Even though everyone who studies that understands that even when they called it the Het Kapita, Het Kapita later on to be enunciated as Egypta, Egypta, where, where we get Gibbets and Egypt from, that this is a latter day name. But notice that this name sticks because it serves a twofold purpose. So basically, what they're saying, they have confused even Egypt in its ancient sense with Gypsy, might in its true sense. Right? Egyptians, gypsies, gypsons, gypsons, Egyptians. You know, we had a reggae artist. I don't know if he's still out there, haven't heard his music lately, but probably still doing something. Um, um, Egyptian, Egyptian. Well, he took off the E of Egyptian and he called himself Egyptian. You know what I'm saying? This is what we have going on right here. Right? So we have the different groups: the Caucasian, the 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 Abz the Ab the Abkhazians, Abkhazians, the Georgians, the Armenians, and Russians, as well as peoples from the Balkans, you know, the Balkanization I was talking about, such as the Albanians, right? Albani, right? Albani, you know, like Laban, Laban, like we have Laban in the Hebrew meaning white, Laban, Alban, right? Albino, you know, we get Albino, Alban, right? Greeks, South, Southern Slavs. Right, Sakalba. Right, not so familiar with some of these names, but they, many of them, have been brought into a kind of a into the Afro Shemitic. Because you remember that the Turkish, right, were Hittite people, but also people who had mixed with people from the Caucasus, so forth and so on. And then when they became Islamic, right, they adopted. Like fully, in other words, though they were not our people. Remember, the Quran says that we re reveal the Quran right in the Arabic language, right? So the Arabic language is very important on the religious level, right? But when the Ottoman Turks came into it, they went. It's like how can you say like somebody who who becomes you know more faithful or seeks to be more faithful than the faithful, right? So we have this right here. Let's just scroll through this because we can get into some of the details here. But it's going to touch on a few highlights right here. So notice, now we have the Muhammad Ali dynasty. I'm not talking about Muhammad Ali. <laughs> right, from 1805 to 1914. Right, 1914. Right, the harem slavery. Not to get into that detail, but check out this article for yourself. Military slavery. Notice this thing that comes up and up about military slavery. Right, military slavery. Right now, Suleiman, right, Suleiman was not, you know, Suleiman with Allah Faransawi, right, became a Muslim. Okay, no, they're talking about another Suleiman right there, not the other Suleiman. So now you, it, it's bringing it now to modern times. So the Ottoman Empire granted Egypt the status of an autonomous vassal state, or what they call the Kedivite. The Kedivite, right? The Kedivite, Kedivite in 1867. Ismail Pasha, right? Khedive from 1863 to 1879. And Tofik Pasha, the Khedive from 1879 to 1892. I want you to note these dates. Son of Man, the birth of the Son of Man, 1892. Right? And those heavenly signs as well. Well, he governed Egypt as a quasi sort of pseudo right quasi independent state under Ottoman suzerainty 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 you know these words like sovereignty so to speak right until until the British occupation of 1882 after which it came under British influence the reason why is because the Britons you know the British they had they had the war you know they they were able to have the troops in the war now it says power concedes nothing without a demand, right? And that demand got to be backed up, right? It can't be an idle threat. That's what we ask about the, you know, for the Kevin Hart thing and, and the Kemetic, you know, Kevin Hart, the Kemites, you know, and, and, and Egypt. You know, what are they going to do about it? You know, what's going to be done about it? Are, are they still going to go over there and give the, you know, give them our money? Right, to see basically grave robbing on display 
That's what is grave robbing on display and then and then racist misinterpretations of things. What? You know? And then what about over here? Right? All the funds that go to these other countries, like we talking about the whole Biden thing. Remember the Biden thing? This Biden, recent Biden thing, got to pick up on this one too right here if you haven't seen. He says, my nation's original stint. Biden apologized to delegation of African leaders. He hasn't done this for black Americans, has he? No. For the unimaginable, right, the unimaginable cruelty of slavery and offers them 55 billion. Uh-oh, 55 billion. Is that a sort of a reparations or repat reparations? Mm. As Rwandan president mocks U.S., in front of laughing crowd. As Rwandan president mocks the United States, we about the government, you know what I mean? When we say black American, we identify with the people, even the indigenous, you know what I'm saying? Um, in front of laughing crowd. Wow, 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 wow. Now I want you to see this part here, the abolition. This part about the abolition, right? So this influenced the policy around slavery in Egypt. Mm-hmm. Right, so we have we have the British coming. Remember, it was the British, to their credit, though they had a hand in even, you know, initiating it in other quarters and regions of the world. But to their credit, right, for the attempts and the abolition of it, even stopping the Americans and those in the West in their rebellious colonies for continuing to go on, right. This is what stopped the whole Ottoman Empire. So the Ottoman Empire ran Egypt I, I want you to understand we, we show you where the Ottoman look out look on the map where Turkey is look at where Turkey is and look where Egypt is how many miles is Turkey from Egypt mm. the Anglo Egyptian slave trade convention look 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 the Anglo like we say Anglo American Anglo European Anglo European is England and Europe, Eastern Europe, I mean Western Europe, and we say Anglo-American, that is, that is England, Great Britannia and her daughter, right, the daughter of baby London of Babylon over here in America. But this is another Anglo. This is the Anglo-Egyptian Slave Trade Convention or the Anglo-Egyptian Convention for the abolition of slavery in 1877. Now, when was, uh, was 1865, right? It's about the reconstruction over here. All right. See what happens when we back up, you know, we back up what we say we we believe or what we hold to be true, what we credit in, right? What we identify with. We, see, because of black people and black men and women and children also fighting for their freedom and others, right? Europeans and others also rising up. But see, it began with us doing something about it. I'm pointing this out because it's another kind of slavery going on with the comedic, right? Modern slavery, right? It's like an academic slavery. It's like intellectual, a psychological thing. They're really saying that they come from the ancient Egyptians where we can study the history from, you know, the decline of the of the indigenous Egyptian influence. The indigenous, we can say for latter-day terminologies, the indigenous African black egyptians right you know the nubians if you if you look at the later dynasties we have the nubian the cushitic dynasties that came about right to try to keep egypt ancient mitzrayi you know smai tawi tameri afloat right but these others were on their way right these others when you when you see how many times egypt as a nation as an ancient black civilization was raped you know, and you see it begin not from the Hebrew time, the Hebrew, the Hebrew and the Israelite incident, the Exodus incident. And yes, it did happen. You're going to listen to those people. Really? They're telling you that everything you're saying is wrong, Afrocentric, comedic, you know, but yet you regurgitate their, you know, their BS, you know, their lies, you know. And then you say, well, I went over there. Yeah, you went over there with permission. You know what I'm saying? And you never raised the banner that we got to reclaim our land. Right? Even if it doesn't happen in your lifetime, your generation, right? It, it is a thing that helps the future be what you desire it to be. Otherwise, you people just keep quiet. They're not saying nothing. All the side net is the rest. Well, they're not saying nothing. 
You know what I mean? They they might say something after this. You know, they, they might say something, but it's gonna be weak. It's gonna be weak. You see what I'm saying? Because of what they hold to, right? Is a truth about our black African presence in ancient Egypt from the foundation. Yes, from the Kushite foundation. Even the ancient Egyptians say in their most oldest writings that it comes from the south. They speak about the origin. The invaders, you know, were coming from, you could say, from the east. You know what I'm saying? And the north, right? And the invaders came from the west. But their origins began in the south. The ancient Egyptians t tell on them their own south. Right? So the official ban on the slave trade to Sudan. Notice that. The slave trade to Sudan. Sudan, what they call Nubia, and even on some maps we can point out as a part of the greater territory of Kush. Right? Thus formally putting an end on the import of slaves right? or the enslaved black people, Africans, from Sudan. So who were doing it? Was it black people doing this? No. This is the Ottoman, this, this all crops out of the Ottoman Turks, right? And we got our own Ottoman Turkish Ethiopian side of the history because a lot of the eunuchs, basically according to Ottoman records, were Ethiopians. They made little Ethiopian boys into eunuchs, right? And sometimes even some of the women, right, into household servants, you know? And on a certain level, I have to say there's a type of a bedwench, right? Sudan was at this time it's happening today also in parts of the so-called greater so-called arab world right because we have yet you know they're playing what they call it in their in their belief um they're playing takia 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 you know like it's deception right a lot of ones are under deception right sudan was at this time the main import of male slaves to egypt why because they had a lot of heavy work they needed to do they ain't the ancient builders of civilization right because the ancients didn't have to do that you know what I mean? Normally when ancient Egypt went into some place, they were trying to steal or take natural resources. And then they would take some of the people. Sometimes some of the people became some of their soldiers. This ban was followed in 1884 by a ban on the import of white women. Can you believe this? This is wild history. Isn't this wild history here? Right? So they was taking slave men or men males, right? black males, to enslave them in Ottoman, post-Ottoman Egypt, right? And then they also was importing white women. This law was directed against the import of white women mainly from the Caucasus and usually Caucasian, Caucasian, right? That was what we had pointed to right there, the Caucasian. You see this right there, what we just highlighted, the Caucasian, which were the preferred choice for harem concubines. Ain't nothing new in the sun, it still be happening. It just maybe with a different group, maybe the Polish or something like that. Among the Egyptian upper class, the upper class, the import of male slaves from Sudan as soldiers, right? Civil service and eunuchs, snip, snip, as well as the import of female slaves from Caucasus, Caucasus, right? As harem women were the two main sources of slave import to modern Egypt. We say modern Egypt because we're, what, in the 19th century, the 1800s, talking about 1800 history right here, right? Thus, these laws were, at least on paper, <laughs> major blows to slavery in Egypt. Slavery itself was not banned. Only the import of slaves, that means just work with what you got, don't import them, right? However, a ban on the sale on existing slaves was introduced alongside a law giving existing slaves the legal right to apply for manumission, you know, like to be emancipated, to be freed from the hand. The anti-slave reforms gradually diminished the Khedive the harem and the harem of the Khedive as well as the harem of the elite family still maintained a smaller amount of both male eunuchs as well as slave woman, white slave woman, until at least World War One. Now let's let's understand the big picture as we look at these details here. So male eunuchs. This is, this is what they're seeking, I guess, to do to, to Kevin Hart. You know, now, is Kevin Hart going to apologize? You know, that, that's the question we have to ask. 
you know, will he apologize for that? This is this seems to be like the cancel, you know, cancel Egypt cancels Kemet culture, black Kemet culture. Yeah, we're gonna say that Egypt cancels black Kemet culture. You know, the Kevin Hart story. <laughs> you know, Kevin Hart, the Cairo story, right? 2023, right? But that's what they want. They want the males. They want you. To, and a lot of the Kemetics, when they go over there, when you go over there to Egypt and put money in their pockets to see, you know, the desecration of your ancient, your ancestors, as you claim, you know, the grave robbing, you know, to see the successful grave robbing and the rewriting of history, basically, you're being like a male eunuch. Basically, basically, you know, I know one's want to defend this so forth and so on. Listen, at this point right here, if you don't see the storm that's coming, well, well, last part of this right here, the Khedive Abbas II of Egypt are noted to have brought, bought six, quote, white female slaves for his harem in 1894. Ten years after this had formally been banned, and his mother still maintained 60 slaves as late as 1931. Now, why do you think these ones here going into 2023, you know, feel they got the balls they do? Because they, they already recognize, they, they look at this proudly. It's just politically they had to kind of stop doing it so overtly, right? There's a group of Sudanese slave girls recently captured at Cairo. You see that over there, right? You go to this Wikipedia page. There's a negress waiting to be sold in the slave bazaar in Cairo. I wonder is that far from where the, the Cairo indoor stadium is, you know? Right, Curzon Robert, 1849. There's Abu Nabut and Negro slaves in Cairo. Negro slaves in Cairo. There's the Dunge Dun Shui incident, prisoners appeal for forgiveness, right? So there's a references here. There's some interesting notes that are down here on this page as well, you know, just to understand some of the details, you know? So this right here, you know, will give you an idea, you know, of how Egypt, how the ancient black presence was compromised. Because you have to understand how it was compromised and in a sense why they feel entitled, you know, because the European basically gives them the title. You know what I mean? What does Egypt, modern Egypt, really produce? Think about it for a moment. At one time, modern Egypt used to be the, um, what they call it? It was like, it was like the, the main Arabic state, the main Muslim Islamic state, the main Arabic state, you know, the main Muslim Islamic state, right? Um, and so what we have right here, here, here is some details here. We'll get into some of this a little bit later on because what we need to do now is see, well, when the first conquerors, right, and the first successful conquerors was the Ottoman, right, uh, not, not Ottomans, were actually the Greeks, right, from the Greek time. And this is going to roughly around, you know, 300, right? It's going to around like 300 BCE, like 300 years before Robeno Yeshua Hanotri, Justice of Nazareth, I and I Rabbi, the Rabbi of Rabbis, our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? So about 300 years before that time. After that time, it kind of went, you know, she went from hand to hand. There's no other way to really say this. You know, we could look at the ancient times where this never was happening and never probably would happen, but then we have to see where things change. So now here in 2022, going to 2023, we have about was about 200, uh, 2,300, right, 2,300 and plus years, right? It could be almost four, 2,400 years since Egypt, that was an ancient black and for modern terminology purposes, African, because they actually literally more of an Ethiopian since they came from the Kui land, the, the, the land of the gods was called that region, the mountain of the moon, right? That's in the Ethiopia, Tanzania, Kenya, Wakanda, or Uganda, you know, region, Zimbabwe region of the world, right? So it's been under the hand of foreigners, right? Talking about Egypt for the past almost 24, 2,400 years, right? And this is something that many of your comedic scholars, right? 
try to avoid, right, or, or kind of jump over. You know what I mean? While at the same time practicing some gross hypocrisy. You know what I mean? You want to talk about us as Hebrews and Israelites about something that happened in the scripture that we claim to have happened and others claim to have happened, but you want to say didn't happen because you're relying on the same ones that are telling you that all you're studying is not black, right? And is not African and is not you. It's basically saying it's not you. This is not yours. And you have to understand why they can say Right, it's not, you know, it's not this. So not only did Kevin Hart, right, get a reality check, right, but the comedic community, right, has gotten a reality check. The question is, what are they gonna do about it? People say, well, why don't we say, what are we gonna do about it? Listen, Israel, right, Beta Israel, right, we the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah, even many of the Hebrew Israelites We'll support you, but we still regard you as our people. You know, even if you are comedic and you black, hey, you know what I mean? We understand the relationship of real ancient Egypt and the real indigenous people. We know that the real indigenous people, well, at least from the beginning, you know, were black. But Egypt has a long history, and we need to know the history of these modern, right, these modern ones that basically have basically checked, you know what I mean, you know, checked not just Kevin Hart, right? But they're checking the comedic community, right? The so-called Afrocentric community. And there's also more to come. I'm surprised that ones and ones have been silent on a lot of the memes I've seen circulating around there and what they've been saying, right? About the comedics, Afrocentric nut jobs, a lot of other things, and what they're trying to, the disinformation that they've been putting out there on a lot of social media platforms. Think about it for a moment. The reason why Egypt even can, can claim to be modern, right, is because of all the subsidies that come from the United States of America. You have to understand how this really works. You see what I'm saying? So on one hand, and then many of them will come over to America and even receive more, they kind of receive a little bit of the quote, civil rights, but they can claim to be Islamic or Arabic and, you know, can talk about some of the post 9-11, you know, trauma that they allegedly received, you know, can claim things like, I even heard one say that, well, people are being racist against them because they are Muslim, just like black people. Many of them will, have no bones about claiming some affinity to black people when they are in our country. I'm saying our country for black Jewish political reasons. I mean, we the black Jews and we black Americans, when they're in our country, you know what I mean? They'll claim these things and y'all will say, feel like, oh, that's so warm and fuzzy. But, but the true nature, let all the poison that lurks in the mud hatch out, that's Claudius. It was a Claudius, yeah, he said that. Let all the poisons, the poisons that are in that mud, in that kemet, you know, is all hatching out. And also note this, how modern Egypt, right, is also envious and hateful, right, to the real origin of ancient Egypt, speaking about Ethiopia, speaking about Kenya, Rwanda, Tanzania, and all those sub, what they call like sub-Saharan African countries, that have supported the GERD, the Grand Ethiopia Renaissance Dam. And it's a damn shame that more of us black people, when, we, when they talk about supporting Kemet or being Kemetic and the ancient, what you call them, they don't make these links, you know? But instead they waste their time trying to argue against Hebrews and Israelites as though they're battling on behalf of, of ancient Kemet. Listen, those people over there are your real enemy. Right or the real ignoramuses that you got to find some way of dealing with them. It's a lot of weakness we're seeing from the comedic community. Cause right now they can put a ban right on all of you as comedics. If they get away with this, canceling Kevin Hart's shows, right, and other people who might have said uh, Egyptians are black people or Egyptians were black people, if they can do this here, they're gonna do that there. They probably won't immediately because many of you are so docile, right? Are really so docile to still go over there and give them your money. People say, well, well, you get to see it for yourself. You get to see it for yourself. 
Listen, you see video of things going on, somebody, all kind of thing happened in video. You know that in the video it happened, if it's, if it's a real, you know, reality footage. You see what I'm saying? You don't need to go over there. You understand? Not under these circumstances. Because you're going over there, right? And basically they're practicing what they call takia. Takia. That means when you're weak, right? When you're weaker than the people who you want to conquer, right? You pretend to be weak. You know, you know, they pretend to be weak. They still receive the funds. They still receive the money from the United States government. That's how Egypt has been able to be reeled in, right, over, over recent history, right? Because all they have to do is say behind back doors, we'll cut different appropriate appropriation of the funds. People always talk about, well, how much money the state of Israel receives, right? Well, let's do this right here for a moment before we get, get, get off on this, right? Because they basically cut into our brother's money right there you know and his funny they cut into his money and his funny right um how much how much u.s dollar right what about the paper right u.s dollar right egypt receives right egypt receives let's see what comes up right egypt receives I spell it wrong way egypt receives there we go they'll correct you U.S. dollar, okay, give us about the exchange, right, the exchange, okay, we might have to use different languages, right, different language, how much subsidiary, you know, subsidies, subsidies, they're talking about the conversion, right, the conversion, well, let's do this right here, well, okay, well, okay, here we go down, we see something on Bloomberg, thank you, Bloomberg, Doomberg, EGP slash USD, Egypt receives 3 billion IMF agreement, after devaluing pound, three billion loan. This is in 2022, right? Desperate for dollars. Look at this. Egyptian streets are desperate for dollars, and they want to open their mouth against Kevin Hart because something he he didn't even say. This is what he gonna talk about when he go. No, because he, he he spoke about it some years or some time ago. Desperate for dollars. A brief explainer of what the devaluation of the Egyptian pound means. Got to follow up on this right here. Desperate for dollars, right? The U.S., you know, the Egyptian, right? The Egyptian pound, right? The Egyptian pound. U.S., USD to the Egyptian pound, the exchange rate. So they, they're heavily connected to the British. And remember the history I just read to you in brief because of what Britain did? Because, see, that, that shows. Right? And where do we have the majority of these artifacts that were grave robbed and stolen? People's graves were disturbed, you know, disturbing the ancient landmarks and all of that. You know, shameful. Shameful both for the white British, the British them, you know, who did it as so-called Christians, you know, at one time, whatever, you know, and also for the, you know, the Egyptians from what they said. Well, anyway, you know, we're not going to go there. You know what I'm saying? But it's the British that basically support, right, and backs up a lot of them historically coming into this modern time. You know, Egypt sues exodus of dollars, sees exodus of dollars since start of Ukraine war. Now, this is the good one here, right? As of December, foreigners held 321.8 billion Egyptian pounds. That's about 20... 20.55 billion right okay that's the conversion right there the egyptian pound the egyptian 321 egyptian pounds is roughly about what 20 let's say 20 billion pounds right i mean 20 billion of course the dollar oh the dollars okay that's wow wow that's like that's like two four six uh two four six six eight twelve um that's like 13 times, 13 to 14 times, 13 to 14 times. Wow. You know, but you see what it says right there. They are seeing, right, exodus of dollars since the start of the Ukraine wars. The Ukraine war, not wars. It might become wars. See, you have to understand how all this goes together. You know, so when they want to talk shite, right, we need to know what to do. 
right, to use the levers that we have opportunity to use. Because many of the comedics, they're not thinking about going back to Egypt or nothing like that besides just going on a tour or vacation, you know, or having some fun looking at some stuff, looking at, you know, the, the desecrated, you know, ancestors thing. You see, they don't think about it like that, but we think about it like that. Because if they were thinking about it like that, things might be better, you know what I mean, for them and for everybody else. But here they're saying, let's see what they said, um, denominated treasuries had jumped 30 to 40% on average. Other estimated the foreign investors had pulled $3 billion out of Egypt since Thursday. $3 billion, let me say dollars. Because if 321 Egyptian pounds is roughly equal to something like, like um, 20 billion US dollars, if that's what that said, if we read that correctly, that means that the dollar is almost 13 times, right? 13 times stronger, right? You know, than whatever their currency, their, their, their EGD or whatever it is, it is, you know what I mean? You know, you get a D, you fail. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you know, it says Russia and Ukraine accounted for around 80% of, of Egypt's wheat imports in 2021. So think about how this all works out. The water comes from inner Africa, the source of ancient Egyptian culture, right? And also life in the water, the inundation of the Nile, right? So they get the water and the topsoil from Ethiopia and the other Horn of Africa nations, right? They're on the continent of Africa, but then want to say they're not African, right? This is why they were so on edge about the Grand Dam. And we still have to keep eyes on, right? Because this is where it gets more desperate you know, they're going to resort to violence. This is historically kind of proven. This is called a prediction. You see, so 80% of Egypt's wheat imports in 2021, data from traders show, right? So this all has, you know, caused things to spin out. And they dare, you know, speak against Kevin Hart, what he said. Okay, if, if they think this is really worth it, you know, if they think this is really worth it, Right. Yeah. At the end of December, the three twenty one point eight billion is the equivalent of what? What? Twenty dollars fifty. Twenty dollars fifty five cents billion. No, twenty billion dollars. So that's about uh, thirteen to fourteen percent. I mean, I mean times times different. Egypt's current account deficit rose to four billion in the July September quarter from two point eight billion a year earlier. Right, so so it's, it's increasing. Official data shows fueled by a rising import bill. Right, like I said, what do they produce? Right, you know how much money they make off that Egyptian stuff, and then to talk, you know, to talk. Um, yeah, okay, we'll see. Right, the NFAs dropped to 11.8 billion pounds in January, down from 186.3 billion at the end of September, right? So it's dropping, it's dropping, right? I mean, look at this billion, it's almost a trillion pounds. Think about it. These have risen, right? These have risen by 360 billion Egyptian pounds, which is the equivalent of 23 billion US dollars. 23 billion US dollars in Egyptian money is 360 billion pounds. Since early October to 985.35 billion pounds. Wow. Things are rising. All right, going to 2023. You know what I mean? 2023. All right, so right here, here, here. You know, Russians, this says Russian. Russians make up about 10% of Egypt's tourists, while Ukrainians account for about 3%, although few official statistics are available. Right? El, El Hami El Zayat, right? chairman of Emeco uh, Travel Set. Right? So one dollar, right? one US dollar is equal to 15.66 right? Egyptian pounds. So one US dollar Right? How many of their money are you gonna get? At least 15 and some change. Right? See, this is what we gotta look at. Also, follow up on how much do do black people tourists, right? Or tourism from America, right? Because once black people get into something, we make it big for everybody else. We'll make something big that we have little to no investment on. Right? You know what I mean? 
That's a difference when we now claim our Hebrew, our Israelite culture. It's a whole new day, right? Egypt sees exodus of dollars since start of Ukraine war. We need to see an article like this. Egypt sees an exodus of dollars since Kevin Hart, since they start to show their racism against black people and African people, right? They see an exodus of more dollars, you know? And we job people, <laughs> you know, can make this happen. You know, we, you know, black people, you, we can make this happen. Comedics, you know, let's unite on this subject matter right here, right? It doesn't even say, it, it said in the prophecy, right, in our scriptures, you know, in the Bible, the Hebrew Bible and the Torah, you know, in the prophets, it says that Egypt is my people, right? And it wasn't talking about those people over there, right? But it's talking about we, the black Jews of the line of the tribe of Judah. We need to stop all this infighting, you know what I mean? You know, don't exodus, you know, more than what, 3,000 something years ago. You want to really deny that it happened. How do you know it didn't happen? All right? They could be being paid to hold back the monuments they found or whatever they found that proved it happened. You don't know how this game works? Mm, you need a good rabbi. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom.